if you're familiar with this channel, you'll know that I've been using this Atlas 3 ton scissor lift for a while. And I did do a brief review on that lift, and I'll link that up in the information card. The scissor lift was great for much of the work that I was doing on my vehicle. However, it limits the access directly underneath the vehicle. For that reason, and to try to preserve the new epoxy floors, we decided to install the Atlas BP8000 2 post lift. I'm going to play a time lapse here to show you the installation process. However, due to the dangers associated with incorrect installation, I'm not going to be providing a tutorial, instructions, or anything like that. I highly suggest that you contact a professional if you have any hesitations installing the lift. Rather than a tutorial, I will be providing some insights as to why I purchased this lift. First. I purchased the lift from Greg Smith Equipment. I'm not associated with them, however their selection and customer service is top notch. When we received the lift, the posts were bolted together and shipped on a small pallet, but other than that there was no real packaging around the posts. We inspected what we could see and we sent the driver on his way. Unfortunately, when we unbolted everything and got the bottom lift post upright, the side that was facing down had some significant damage. I debated installing this post, however, after paying $2,100 for the lift, we really wanted a clean unit. So I called Greg Smith Equipment, and after talking to two customer service reps and sending a few pictures, they had a new post on its way. In the meantime, we installed the non-damaged post. Two days later, the new post arrived. They sent a brand new post, but we did have to transfer the hydraulic unit, pulleys, and the carrier from the old unit. Not a big deal, and they didn't even ask for the old post back. So with the new post, we installed the other side. So obviously I shopped around quite a bit to find a new lift to replace the scissor lift. My primary requirements were really the limitations of this garage. The garage has 9 foot 3 inch ceilings and has a residential concrete slab. I did contact the builder of this property to verify the properties of our slab and it's 4 to 5 inches thick, rated for 3500 psi and reinforced with glass fibers. So with a 9 foot ceiling and only 4 inches of concrete, two post lift options are relatively limited. This lift and a handful of other brands that seem to be selling the identical lift with a different brand name seem to be the most robust unit that met this criteria. With both posts installed and torqued the specification, all that was left was installing the cables and the arms, then wiring it up. We had a professional electrician run the 240 volt power to the lift and wire up the hydraulic unit. We also ran two 120 volt outlets and air lines down both posts from the ceiling. And with that, the lift was officially installed. However, we were severely height limited by the garage door motor. We considered getting a sidewinder, but at the end of the day, we don't really need a power garage door, so I just removed the whole unit.
Now, let's get the Golf R up on the lift and test it out. As you can see, we can make full use of the 9-foot ceilings and have pretty good access to the underside of the car. I'm 6'2", so there's no way I'm standing up under here. However, with a medium-sized stool, it's a perfect height. Now we have access to the entire underside of the car where we were restricted with the scissor lift before. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see this lift in use, Consider subscribing to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I upload. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.